But the alternative is, is we're sitting on something right now that could change the entire landscape of the planet within five to 10 years, if it's not suppressed. Have you been frightened about the prospect of global catastrophe due to climate change? You're not alone, but there is a glimmer of shining hope within our dystopian reality. Recently, breakthrough developments of the Bendel engine and its independent verification have proven optimistic. In this short video, I'll break down this breaking news and explain how this technology has been suppressed for decades. Recently, Randall Carlson was on the Before School show talking about the controversy of the inventor, Malcolm Bendel, and his postponed episode of the Joe Rogan podcast recorded earlier this year. You know, when I first, you know, basically what happened was I was still at the point where, you know, I had already been talking to several people that were involved with it, all, including the primary inventor, um, and then several other people, uh, that knew him, uh, and I'd become convinced that there, see, that there was something there. But in the interim, when that November show went out, but it rippled all the way around the planet. He finally broke silence as to why one of the most important episodes of the Joe Rogan experience has not been aired yet. And several things happened. One is that the inventor who had been isolated for almost seven years on an island in the Indian Ocean, came to America. Number one, he'd been I inadvertently outed him. And then he was going to kind of teach me and guide me through the principles of plasma technology. Uh, in the interim, Jamie had pulled up this stuff from a couple of decades ago, which was basically stuff that found its way into the media whose primary purpose was to discredit Malcolm and portray him as a grifter. I do not wish to talk about it myself, but I've been a victim of quite a bit of suppression. So has any other legitimate researcher in this area. Right. The reason was, and it's a kind of a long story, but I've had it verified by several people who, who, who've been close to the whole thing. And one of them is a best-selling Australian author, Roland Perry. Uh, who spent four years investigating this whole thing that went down in the early 2000s and late 90s when Malcolm uh, discovered that there was a high probability that there was a major oil reservoir in Tasmania. And he got licensing to do exploratory drilling from the Tasmanian government. And he was raising money to do the exploratory drilling. Well, it turned out that one of the major oil companies had overstated their reserves by about 30%, which could have gotten him into a whole lot of trouble. Look, and here you've got this kind of lone, you know, oil prospector. His background was in geochemistry. He had the licensing, the drilling license to drill. And they decided that, that if they could get control of that oil, it would solve their problem. What they did, their tactic was to try to scare away the investors. They bribed journalists, they bribed politicians to sort of concoct this whole narrative, and that's what they did, to portray him as a, a, a kind of a, nut, a religious nut job, things like that. He's done things and said things that, you know, give, gives him fuel in a way. Most recently, Malcolm and Bob Greenier from the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project presented the thunderstorm generator to an audience of scientists in Zurich, Switzerland. Malcolm, who was initially met with some skepticism, that is until his engine was confirmed at the conference to reduce carbon emissions by turning waste exhaust into oxygen via a cold fusion process discovered and suppressed in the Pons Fleischmann experiment. And he was at MIT in the, in the science office for education when he saw how they had changed the data on the reproducing the Pons Fleischmann experiment. And he blew the whistle. Uh, I inadvertently was looking through some piles of paper that had been given to me in a casual manner by all these hot fusion physicists as they were trying to do their calorimetric uh, repeat of the Pons Fleischmann experiment. And to my utter astonishment, I can remember sitting at my desk in my study and actually 
seeing these two sheets of paper, the one dated July 10th, 1989, and another dated July 13th, three days apart. The difference between July 10th and 13th was dramatic. And I was stunned. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It looked like monkey business to me at the time, and it has turned out to be exactly that. It was a lower echelon person in the Plasma Fusion Center at MIT, one of the 16 authors of a scientific paper done under Department of Energy contract that had altered data. And that data is scientific fraud, as far as I'm concerned, and many other people are concerned. Between Bob Greenier, a highly credible engineer, and all the independent researchers at the Tesla conference, there shouldn't be any more controversy regarding the thunderstorm generator. It really does work. Jordan from Alchemical Science has personally verified the engine on his channel, and I highly suggest you give it a watch. Malcolm's presentation in Switzerland gives a clear and concise explanation as to what exactly is happening within the generator. The thunderstorm generator has shown a remarkable ability to increase efficiency by disassociating oxygen and hydrogen and then feeding said hydrogen back into the engine. Utilizing sacred geometric principles and specific ratios, the thunderstorm generator successfully replicates a thunderstorm in a bottle. I treat air and out of air, I make it more than just providing oxygen for the combustion process. There are combustion stimulating molecules and radicals generated in this process. Thunderstorm in a bottle. We've already proven this is possible with the star in a jar experiment. Contained in a flask of liquid. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light several thousand times a second, giving the appearance of a star. A revolutionary discovery of producing plasma in the form of micro-bubbles within a vacuum chamber of water. Using ultrasound, these micro-bubbles produce tiny amounts of plasma, as confirmed by the ultraviolet light radiating from the jar. It is highly suspected that these bubbles are forming plasmoids, which are plasma contained in the form of a torus shape. By structuring how the bubbles implode using sound or compression, the symmetrically collapsed bubbles produce a self-contained electromagnetic field capable of absorbing, storing, and releasing enormous amounts of energy. It's estimated that up to 100 kilovolts can be released when the clusters of plasmoids explode, as proven by Ken Shoulders and his work with charged clusters microscopic ball lightning. The late physicist Ken Shoulders developed a technology called charge clusters, which are likened to ball lightning. When they are discharged, they actually tap into the zero-point energy field. This is where most of the power in Stan Meyer's device was coming from. Like Stan, Ken Shoulders faced terrible suppression. And so I, I met with this CEO, and he says, yes, they approved a $5 million grant from DOE so we could develop this further because one of the effects it had that they were really pursuing was putting low-level, initially, radioactive waste in these charged clusters, and it would cause isotopes that were non-radioactive to be created. What does this mean? You clean up all the radioactive waste. However, the phenomenon, the reason it was doing it, was that it was actually activating, as it were, this baseline energy field that's at the fabric of space and time. And that's what they didn't want out. So in the rarest of events, that grant was published, and these vicious people who want to keep all this stuff secret went into the, the, the Secretary of, of Energy's office and said, pull that grant. And they pulled it. Utilizing the lens of Marco Roden's vortex theory, this makes sense. Based on his theory, everything in the universe is a vortex. It is nature's path of least resistance. 
Bendel confirms this by discovering that all elements are plasmoids. These vortexes exist from the quantum level all the way to black holes, which leads one to ponder. Does a white hole actually exist in the back of every black hole? New discoveries in astrophysics says there very well could be a white hole at the back of every black hole, sucking things in and then spitting them out. Chaos and creation, yin and yang, as above, so below. These new discoveries could lead to unifying gravity with the other fundamental forces of the universe. Finally, bridging the gap between quantum physics and general relativity. However, plasmoids aren't a new discovery. They have been a forbidden science for decades. A secret science that had cost some inventors their lives. The realization that there could be hidden knowledge kept from the general public in order to maintain a status quo, one that relies heavily on the petrodollar. It's not an easy pill to swallow. It's not a small thing. It's not a matter of, of finding proof for some technology, for some invention, and convincing everybody of it. You can't convince somebody of something that so totally contradicts their basic assumptions about the universe. From the legacy of Martin Fleischmann to Stan Meyer's suspected plasmoid water-powered engine, the history of this suppressed science is well documented if you know where to look. Although these shadowy figures have left their fingerprint of void evidence, they are the reason why Malcolm has to assemble his thunderstorm generator before a conference and cannot rely on the postal service to deliver his specialty-made parts. Malcolm and his team rolled up there and banged together a fresh thunderstorm generator a day before the conference as usual. And if you're wondering why it has to be this way, I don't really want to be the one to break it to you, but there are some people out there who make life honestly quite difficult for Malcolm. Let's just say that his parcels rarely arrive where and when he needs them. Um, and he's getting quite used to this and he's been smuggling his spheres all around the world in his suitcase for years trying to get this out there. So this isn't just some story from Malcolm either. I've personally been in contact with many of the people who've worked with on him uh, on this project with him um, at some point or other and the situation is well known and acknowledged. So Malcolm's been relentlessly suppressed and attacked over the years because he is onto something very big. At any rate, the new Bang Up prototype worked for the conference and they were able to demonstrate the reduction in carbon monoxide and dioxide and increase in oxygen as usual uh, to applause from the crowd. And you can check out these videos on the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project YouTube channel. That is why pioneers like Marco Rodin, Malcolm Bendel, Randy Powell, Jordan from Alchemical Science, and other independent researchers are the true heroes of renewable energy. They have fought to open source this technology for the benefit of the world. It is the only true strategy to circumvent suppression. The suppression we've seen time and time again. Black show, so someone comes along, they offer you $20 million for your device, it's a corporation, they put it on a shelf. The national security orders, we're going to show you one from a man we just met with. Patent seizures, financial entanglements from investors because they're doing their whole business in legal strategy wrong. Legal entanglements where they end up in court. Threats to the individuals. I had a guy under contract building one. All you have to do is have some thugs come in and say, you, your wife, you're dead, you stopped this, and he stopped. And then scientific fraud. Smear campaigns that attempt to discredit someone's character. Classic logical fallacies that distract from the real argument of, does this technology actually work? and onto a more primitive instinct. Deflection is something we also see reflected in our political system, a tried and true technique to discredit anyone who disrupts the current macroeconomic system. It's time to summarize the groundbreaking science that Bendel explained during his conference. As Jordan puts it, these energy clusters are quasi-stable formations that exist everywhere. They're all around us. However, conventional science doesn't recognize them. Many scientists have called them different names. Monopoles, charged clusters, radiant energy. As it turns out, these are all used to describe the phenomenon of static electricity, a revolutionary discovery hidden in plain sight, as the true nature of static electricity has eluded scientists for centuries. As we break through these chains of suppression, we are about to experience a radical change of our civilization 
A drastic paradigm shift is about to happen with this revolutionary plasmoid technology. Are you prepared? For more videos like this, and updates on plasmoid technology and other forms of forbidden knowledge, subscribe to my channel. Beneficence TV. Beneficence is beautiful.